So what I am planning to do today is look at some process options for softening. We'll talk about single flow, we'll talk about split flow, and we'll talk about two stage. So when we talk about single stage, what we're talking about is a system that is only removing carbonate hardness minerals. So we're not attempting to remove the non-carbonate hardness. So we have no um, soda ash added, we're only adding lime. So when you go back and you think about those reactions, in terms of the reactions, the first, because we always have to add lime to neutralize the CO2. The second reaction, which was the removal of calcium, <clears throat> carbonate hardness due to calcium, and then the third, which is the removal of carbonate hardness due to magnesium. Now, if we only need calcium removal, then here, the two reactions that are pertinent are one and two. If we need to remove magnesium, then we need to raise the pH to 11.3, and that is to precipitate the magnesium hydroxide. So because the solubility of magnesium carbonate is still quite high, we need to shift that equilibrium to form magnesium hydroxide. And here we're looking at reactions one, two, and three. Now we can also use a two stage. And in this case, in both the previous case and in this case, the entire flow is being treated. So in the first stage, we're adding lime and then we're adding soda ash in the second stage. So we're looking at removal of carbonate hardness in stage one. So again, we're looking at reactions one, two and three. And then in the second stage, we're looking at removing the magnesium hardness. So we're looking only at stage five. So we're looking at the removal of non-carbonate hardness due to magnesium. We're only adding soda ash. In both cases, shown here, um, <clears throat> we only need a pH of 10.3 for reaction five. So what is shown here is that we add CO2. So if you remember when we add CO2, it reacts with water to form carbonic acid. And that carbonic acid will lower the pH. So we lower the pH from 11.3 to 10.3 here, and we still need to lower the pH further because we can't distribute water at a pH of 10.3. The maximum we want to distribute is about 9.2. So in this case, CO2 is again added in order to lower the pH. So here, what you would want is a pH between eight and nine as your final pH. <clears throat> now we can also operate as split flow. And here, you're not treating the entire flow. This is the process that uh, Lansing, if we went, if we were to go to the Lansing dye plant, this year, this is what we would see. So what they do is they add lime in the first stage, but they don't treat the entire flow. So they're treating some fraction of the flow. They bypass some fraction of the flow. They then mix that 
here and they treat the entire flow. So we're treating the entire flow through the second stage. Now we do this because we, we don't need a water with 40 milligrams per liter of calcium carbonate. 40 milligrams per liter comes from the practical limits. So we can tailor a water to have about 40 milligrams per liter of magnesium hardness. That's kind of an ideal, it's a rule of thumb. It's essentially a um, water that isn't going to produce significant problems with scaling on the hot water heaters, scaling in the valves, etc. So this reduces the capital cost because we don't need as big of a stage one tank. It reduces operational costs because it reduces the amount of sludge that we need for stage one. And if it reduces the amount of, <clears throat> sorry, the amount, it reduces the amount of chemicals we need for stage one. So it's reducing the amount of lime that we need to add. It also reduces the amount of sludge we produce. So you get a double benefit. And then the other thing that it does is it uses the natural alkalinity in the water to adjust the pH. Notice here, there isn't a recarbonation step between stage one and stage two. And the reason for that is we're using the alkalinity in the raw water to, to provide additional alkalinity and to adjust the pH. So in this case here, we add lime in stage one. We may add lime in stage two, or we may just add soda ash, depending on what we're trying to remove and in terms of the water quality. The operational pH is 11.3 in stage one, just as it was before, and 10.3 in stage two. Um, and what we will do is we'll adjust this bypass. So this X is the bypass ratio. We'll adjust that based on the hardness levels. And we use magnesium as our criteria. Okay. So what we're doing is we'll soften the water to practical limits in stage one, but we're not softening all of the water. We'll then blend the raw water with the treated water, and then we'll treat in stage two. Okay. So if we treat to practical limits, the magnesium concentration from stage one is 10 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. Where did that come from? What's the source of that 10 milligram per liter concentration? The 10 milligram per liter concentration comes from the solubility limits for magnesium hydroxide. It also takes into account that precipitation reactions are not instantaneous, so we can't achieve, we actually don't achieve equilibrium in the treatment process. And we have potential short circuiting, so not all of the water may reside in the tank for the design um, hydraulic detention time. So this here, we will refer to as the initial magnesium concentration because it's the initial reaction level. It's our solubility limit. Mg final is what we achieve here. So Mg final is what we achieve from the second, it's the, out, it's the effluent from the second stage. And Mg raw is our raw water magnesium concentration. Notice here, we assume that we have no additional magnesium removal 
during recarbonation, we assume we have no additional magnesium removal during filtration or any subsequent process.